And we're back. Long time off. It's been too long, my friend. I think it's been... I should have done a day count. Should have. I could do a day count. But I've been trying to get you over here. Been begging, pleading. The people want content. People have been asking. And finally, October 26th. Chilly, cool fall day. We just had some nice weather. Finally got you in the basement. Kids are in bed. Let's talk ball. I've, I've, <laughs> I've returned to make a proclamation. Oh, a proclamation? An early proclamation? This, this is a proclamation day. Is this guy a prophet? This is proclamation day for Spartan fans all across the world. Are we proclaiming... Our territory? Dominance. Dominance. <laughs> In the rivalry, at In least. In the state of Michigan. That's it? That's, That's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's proclaiming. I'm, I'm not I'm proclaiming it. Don't know who he's dominating or how they're dominating or when they're dominating, but we are proclaiming dominance. So, as we all know, if you're tuning in to Spartan My Take today... It's because you want to get the scoop on the big game this weekend, 7.30 prime time, ABC at the Big House. Spartan Dogs are coming down south, and we got upsets on our mind. It's been a rough go so far this season. It hasn't gone as expected. This is our championship, so we had high expectations, and we'll get into it a little bit later, but I think we're both feeling cautiously optimistic. I am. I'm not being cautious. He's not being I'm, cautious. I'm throwing caution. He's to the bold. Wind. He's throwing big money down on this. What is it? Uh, what's the spread? The spread. 20s? I think last I saw twenty one and a half. Um, that's not bad. What? So that thing you're is looking at a four hundred money line. Something so like that. You can that. make some cheddar if you're feeling good about this. Been reading reading stuff all week from from people in Vegas who have said really the smart money is staying off this game. And there's not a huge betting favorite in this, and well, that's a lot a ton of points of people, to cover. It is, game. it is, but they're especially in this time. rivalry. They just got done and running Penn State out of the house, so Michigan's coming in riding high. We are trying to get things back in the right direction after after early, you know, high expectations. Obviously, everyone's down on the Spartans, but we got a nice win at home. Albeit against a struggling Wisconsin team that just fired their head coach and it took overtime, but we got it done. We got things going in a positive direction. Yeah. We're getting healthy, which it might be an underrated factor. Yeah. We got Xavier Henderson, who played against Wisconsin, another a bye week to get healthy. Uh Slade in the middle, back again. So we got we got some dogs that are that are healing. They've licked their wounds. What about on the offense? There's someone that, that, that you might be interested no, no, that's, I mean, that's getting healthy or is I mean, that, that, that does not, not matter? I, I think all of it. I mean, you look at the game and you see the the rushing stats that Michigan's put up against what looks like a good defense in Penn State. Astronomical. Running for 400 I think yards. Quorum, and then who's their other back? Combined uh, for like over 300 yards. Yeah, the uh, – Edwards kid from uh, WB. So it could be strength versus strength. (laughs) The thing thing is, yes, uh, on paper, I think even beyond paper, um, based on what's happened this year, it screams big Michigan win. Oh, no doubt. And I understand it. I understand that could happen. I understand that could happen. But when I see things lining up, such as, like you mentioned, Slade coming back, uh, Xavier being back, and now being able to rest for two weeks after the, the first time back he played. Same with Slade. And then you see they move Winman back to linebacker. His natural position. And he made plays in pass coverage, which we haven't seen a linebacker at Michigan State make plays in the pass coverage since I don't even know. Um, it's been a minute. So, so you you have that factor. Probably, yeah. Uh, Aaron Brule, the transfer from Mississippi State, is finally starting to, to play a little bit. He's been banged up. He got healthier. He was a projected second round pick 
in the NFL, and he came back and transferred to MSU. We got a couple of those. He's talented. I've been telling People you are happened. starting to find their spot. I do have concerns over the secondary, for sure. But Michigan doesn't pass the ball. They're going to try and run it. They're going to try and run it down our throat. I think we have the D tackles, Slade, Barrow, uh, Hunt, Mallory, Hanson. That's a rotation of five really, really good Big Ten D tackles. That I don't know that Michigan has played. Like Penn State doesn't have that. They don't. And they don't have a linebacker like Winman. Well, and I understand that, that they have a very good offensive line. They ran the ball okay on us last year. Um, it was more the pass that beat us last year with with McNamara. McNamara's not playing. It's J.J. They're going to be airing the ball. They're, the two beat us bad. They're not going to be able to run the ball and beat us bad. They're going to have to throw the ball. So and J.J.'s going to have to do it. And I have not seen him do it. So we got to stop the run. Steve has established a game plan for us. And it's a tough one. It's a tall order against one of the top rushing offenses in the nation. And our rushing defense is good, but... It hasn't been great without Slade and without the necessary... So we want J.J. to beat us. Yeah, for sure. Make you JJ have to make beat J.J. beat us. Against our secondary that has got a healthy Xavier. The, the, got the a problem, quarterback back. Communication maybe be a little bit The problem is we don't have to make J.J. beat us because... You you know Harbaugh is going to be stubborn. You know he's going to try and run the ball over and over and over again, and that's fine. I hope he does. I I really don't want him to throw the ball a ton because our secondary is is suspect. But based on his stubbornness, I think they will run the ball, and I think it will at times. Not be shut down, but contained to where we're getting some punts. And they're not just marching up and down the field. So Steve O's recipe for success. we got to shut down the run. And then our we just have to be able to hold up there's, in the there's, secondary. Not give up correct, big plays. Correct. Bend, don't break. Don't correct. let us don't let them just gash us with those correct. crossing routes that we love to not cover. I I it and wouldn't I think surprise me. Xavier healthy is gonna help that big time. This people have been down on our secondary like yeah. crazy, but we've been missing our quarterback. So fingers crossed, maybe it's a little bit too optimistic. You, but we might be able to contain the run game. And just do enough in the past game. Maybe. And if we can keep them out of the end zone, I think this could be a kind of a get right game for us. Where so finally we I got don't, the guys no, back. No, it could no, be. No, no. Absolutely it could last, be. What last do you mean? week. You're predicting a win. How could last this not week, be a get right game? Last week was our get right game. And but we didn't so, get all the way right. We scored a bunch of our points we, in overtime. So so after the game. It was not a clean game. After the game. We guys were coming back that had been you just talk for twenty minutes. Let me talk. I it's have my turn. It's my turn. I had a proclamation, and you keep jumping. Finish in. your proclamation. I can. The people want to hear the proclamation. So after Speak. after the Wisconsin game, okay, Jim Leonard, the interim head coach, defensive coordinator, highly sought after defensive coordinator, knows defenses. Wisconsin's head coach. Yeah, yeah. He turned down the Packers job. Now we're stuck with Joe Barry. Yeah, exactly. Joe Barry. He said defense. we showed them things defensively that we had not shown anyone all year. Okay. And I think there's going to be more of that in store for Michigan, stuff that they haven't seen. I think we may do some stuff different with our corners. Those easy passes that, that J.J. might think are going to be there might not be. Um, they may change it up on them and really confuse them. Um, do you think that has anything to do with getting Xavier back and then getting the absolutely. transfer, getting the transfers more comfortable yes, with our scheme? For sure, people forget speed is basically brand new in our system. Yeah, yeah he, he'd been with he's a, before he's a press a corner bit. though. They keep backing him up and having him react. He's a press corner, throw him on day. someone Big and let him jam it up. But beyond that, there's a couple things that really just have my antenna up on this. One. We beat them last year. We have a lot of guys in our locker room. Know how to beat Michigan. That at Michigan. Just did it. And, yeah, did it at Michigan and then did it at, at home. Empty big house. I'll give them that. It was the COVID year. But, but at home last year, you just beat them. 
Yeah. You just beat them. You have nothing but confidence that you can beat those guys. So on the other side of the things, do you think that that green and white helmet gets in Michigan's head a little bit and they either are trying too hard or they're a little bit timid or they're just off their game trying to be big brother expectation is to this, blow us out right now in the past it's i mean obviously last year was a top 10 matchup i feel like we get in their heads a little bit i mean 10 out of 14 how could we not i think it's absolutely the opposite i think we're not in their head they're overconfident i think they ignore us and that's proven to be they can't though but they they're do pissed off about last but, season they think they got screwed in the the fact that we had a bye week Makes it even better. So did that. Because, yes, and I get that, and that's fine. But that, like, I heard someone say earlier, you each coach has to make sure that they don't, their team doesn't play the game the week before. Not yeah, don't get tired out too early. Don't get too Don't hyped. be too amped up. Don't be too into it. And I maybe Michigan State is in that, but I would, I would think in Michigan's revenge mode – slash factor that more than likely they probably got into it a little bit more last week than the Spartans did. And they're coming off a big win also on primetime TV. So this is probably their best game of the season that they're coming off of. So they've played their best ball. We haven't. That might not bode well for us, but it's the, something. The it's side, there. They might be sleeping a little bit at the wheel. 7-0. They got a they got Ohio State at the end of the road. They always got their minds on that. I don't know who do they have. Saban, uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't remember. They don't have anyone else really good. They're not looking past us. State. But Saban, Saban always said they said last year. Oh, that game didn't matter. We made the playoffs. This game fucking matters. Okay, that I mean in yes this state, no. this matters. I would have rather have had the season we had last year than the season but, that they had. But, Evan, you have a 100-year a history of them looking past us. So to magically think that all of a sudden they're not going to look past us, I need to see that to believe that. I think they like to say that they look past us. What In all reality, I, I would think they're 14. 10, the, the, the MSU 10-5 and 5 record the last 15 years. They got Rutgers Speaks to us. a lot of that. They're locked in. We're both locked in. It's rivalry week. They want Paul Bunyan back as as much as they might say that it doesn't matter. It does matter. I big I, time. I do think it matters to them. I don't. Think Hardball's it matters. three and four against us. I do think it matters. I do not think it matters as much to them as it does to us. Well, yeah. I mean, they're seven and zero. Oh, we're three and four. So this is the biggest game of the year for us. So they have higher hopes, but. As far as their schedule goes, they might say Ohio State's more important, but they got their big win against Ohio State last year. Right now, in this climate, this is the most important game on their schedule. They, this is a game they're supposed I to win. I would say they're the Penn State this game. This is a game they're supposed to win. And it's Michigan State, and we've had their number for the past 14 years. But a game you're supposed to win is not one of your most important games. Yeah, but it's games. Michigan State. But they, they have claimed us as not the rival for ever. So, if at the very least, it's their second most important game. I would I would say Penn State, in their eyes, would have been more important, considering you think Penn they'd rather State lose looked to a Penn lot State better and beat us, or lose to us and beat Penn State. They would have rather beat Penn State. No way. No I, way. I okay. So Follow maybe friend Casey. What maybe do you say? maybe not. However. If you would have picked a game to play your A game in, they would have picked Penn State over Michigan State. Because uh, they debatable. firmly, I guarantee you, they firmly believe they could come in, play their B, C game, and beat us. I'm talking about Walmart Wolverines here. I'm talking they about. They don't matter. They're, they, they don't all matter. matter. They all matter. They're you not see playing. In your day to day life, and they care about this. That game. means nothing. To anything for the fans, that no. all means something. No. So you're talking about the players? Yes. So the players. Why would I be predicting the game based off what Walmart I'm talking about Wolverines the Michigan are doing. as a whole? The well, whole evil irrelevant. empire. It's irrelevant. And that's that's why we're in here. predicting the game. That's, that's irrelevant. why we're here. I mean, yeah, we can acknowledge that ninety percent of the fan base is trash. Point from a player standpoint, this is at least the second most important game on their schedule. To the fan perspective, okay, but to the team, 
like I said, I guarantee you they okay, coach. They 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 They're would not rather pissed. have played their A game against Penn State than us because maybe not going into the season, but probably by week three or four, especially after Penn State got a big win on the road at Auburn, um, I could totally see that they would have wanted to play their A game against Penn State, not us. And Coach Saban always says that you can get your these kids in this age group, you can get them up two times a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Twice, Twice a year. I don't know. I think they get up a little, a little bit more than that. I, I, I really, I trust them. I mean, you might get lucky and get <laughs> a special team. Two playoff games. They can't get up for those. <laughs> I mean, that's a little bit different. This is the regular season when you're going week in and week so you're out. Just talking about regular season. Yeah, going week in and week out. Well, when you're Bama, you don't have to get up for anybody. Correct. We have to get up every week to go eleven. In that, he he would make sure that the games that they were going to play their A ball were going to be the ones they needed to. Okay. And and that's where I'm I'm thinking. There might be an opening here. The other thing that I think might be the most critical out of all of it. Do you know who's going to be calling the game on on Saturday night? Oh, uh, let's see. ABC Primetime Kirky? Nope. Um, oh, it's going to be uh, Nate Clad. Nope. They're on Fox. Oh, yeah. Who is it? I don't know. Oh no! There's trouble with the oh, snap. Yes. Sean McDonough himself. McDonough. Him, and who's the uh, the color? Analyst? I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. Man, Sean McDonough will be on the call. The last time he called the Michigan Michigan State game was in twenty fifteen. Fifteen all time call for the best call I'll in be sure all of college football history. People. Oh yeah, they're gonna hear it for sure. Oh my gosh. And I remember saying before that snap, 10 seconds, just enough time for some Michigan State magic. So, yeah, that's a good omen. Real, that's a nice, nice little nugget that you added to the program. There, that's, Steve. that's a nugget. Good that is you. a nugget. So, so you got Sean McDonough. You got Michigan riding high. You got State coming in, getting healthy, making adjustments right after a get-back game and then getting healthy for two weeks. Our strength of our defense – which I know a lot of you are laughing, thinking, oh, they don't have a strength. <laughs> yes, we do. Get over it. Jacoby's going to be flying around. If they try and come into the teeth of our defense, it will not go like it went against Penn State. I'm saying it now. Yeah, they. I mean, they might get us here and there, but they, they're not going to be able to just line up and run us over. So with all that said, the table's set. We're feeling pretty optimistic, like I said. What's We're your, gonna pick. What's it. your confidence meter? We're gonna pick that it. Sparty's able to pull the upset and keep the bunny trophy at home on a scale from one to ten. I'm going to six or wow. seven, and I'm going thirty to twenty-seven. 5. Thirty to twenty-seven. Thirty to twenty-seven. Spartans win with a six point five confidence meter. Yep. Wow, that's a well thought out <laughs> prediction. I've been I've been having a lot of time to think so, about this. We're in the big house. It's on prime time. I don't know if we would have preferred to be a noon kickoff, being at their place, um, because that better chance of catching the more talented team asleep earlier in the day. But it's still a rivalry game. On paper, we have no chance, but we all know that we can throw that out because we've done this before. So my confidence meter to pull the win, I don't know, just something inside me just... Feels like we're gonna do it. I feel like we're primed. Like we still have the team that everybody was optimistic about at the beginning of the season. And yeah, it turned out to not be that team, but we we have talent. So I'm gonna put my confidence meter at a seven point five that we're gonna win. It's gonna be it's gonna be close. We're not gonna definitely we're definitely not gonna win by more than a touchdown. And as far as the score goes, I'll. Since you threw your score out there, didn't really think about that a lot. We're not a very high-scoring team, but like I said, this is a get-right game. Jaden's healthy. He's going to score. Ask Rocky Lombardi and uh, he's going to score two TDs. He's going to be the second coming of Ricky White. Ricky White, baby. two TDs. Sparty's win. 
They Three. haven't been challenged on the outside like they 37, will be on 33? Saturday night. Again? Same score. Same score. As last season. It has been 37, said. 37-33. So, I had a couple questions for you. Fire. So, as far as the rest of the season goes, we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. But, would you rather beat Michigan and make and win a bowl game? Or, excuse me, beat Michigan... And miss a bowl game. Or lose to Michigan and make and win a bowl game. I'd rather lose. Why? Wait. The bowl game, just the practices for the young guys that we have, I feel like would make a big difference. But it's it's really tough. I would like to win in, in uh, Mexico. You'd like to think that if we See, win, the thing is, it's going to yeah. spark a run. There's no but way we're going to win. the head, not give, me the, give me the bunion. What is that? Day. Because when we look back at this season, we're, we, I, I get what you're saying about yeah. getting the extra practices and in yeah. all reality of the yeah. situation, you're probably right. But forget that. When I look back at 2022, I'm not going to be looking for uh, – Pepperoni, Pizza Bowl, Trophy, Little yeah, Caesars okay. Bowl. Oh, we beat Nevada. I'm looking at, did we beat Michigan? And did we win 11 out of 15? And did we keep the dominance going in the series? So I'll give me that game all day long. So we both predicting wins, as we should. We wouldn't have it any other way. Any other topics before you want to sign off, Big Dog? No, I, I'm... Uh... That's that's basically my thoughts for the the weekend. We got a tea um, time with the boys. It's going to be a yeah. beautiful Saturday, 60 degrees, and the Spartans are pulling the upset. You heard it here, folks. Yeah, I'm really shocked that you went in a seven and a half degree confidence out of nowhere. It makes you feel like I feel good. Stealing I feel, my proclamation. I feel good. <laughs> I'm more confident than Steve. <sighs> I don't know. I obviously. It's a game we should lose, but for the reasons I stated, I think it is ripe, absolutely ripe for an upset. We can do you it. see it all the time in college football. You see it all the time. Absolutely. It's a little harder on the road, but we've been winning on the road at Michigan for about 10 years now, 15, 20 years now. No one's afraid of that stadium, the big hole. The big library. Awfully quiet. Shh. Offense at work. <laughs> well, so, yeah. hey, thanks for getting back to the crib. I appreciate you. Let's make this a weekly occurrence. Spartan Nation, be ready. Big things are happening on Saturday. Peace. Let's go. Let's go. Oh,